Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, I'll be talking about how to do file IO operations in C++. File IO operations are having multiple features and multiple topics also. So what I have done is I've divided my complete video into multiple parts. In the first part, I'll be talking about the basics of file IO concepts in C++ and the remaining parts will be taking you to further steps and more complex application developments in C++ using the concepts of file IO. So let's begin with file IO. Those programmers who have already learned C or Java, they must be knowing the importance of file IO. For those who don't know, I just want to tell you that what is the importance of file IO or you can say what are the advantages or what is the need of file IO, you should understand first that. If any case, if you run any program, simple program without using the concepts of file IO, in that scenario it is something like that. Whatever value you are entering or your processing is stored in the RAM or you can say in the memory. As and when you get out of the program or as and when you shut down the computer, any of the two of which whichever happens first, the data whatever you are processing will be lost. That means the data is temporarily being stored. So if in any case you want to store the data for longer run or for the future processing purpose, then in that case you have to store the data into secondary storage memory and that is possible with the help of file IO in C++. Yes, it is true that we can store data in the database and if you know the reality, the in database also internally stores the data in the file concepts only. That means ultimately we have to store the data into secondary storage memory so that it can be processed in the future also. So let's get into it. So we know that what is the need of file and what are the advantages we are generally getting with file IO or you can say in what scenario you should go with file IO or not. So let's start it now. First and foremost, if someone says like I want to do file IO operations in C++, what are the libraries I will be required? So first and foremost, all the C++ file IO related operations or you can say classes are defined in the header file called fstream.h. So if you're using Turbo C, you have to include fstream.h header file. Okay, so I expect if you're using Windows and Turbo C, you will be writing fstream.h. Those users who are using VC++, or you can say the Turbo C which is uh, cons using the concepts of namespace and all or the Linux users in that case they don't include the H they simply write F stream I hope so you know the difference and all those things okay so the new compilers don't require the dot H concepts because it uses the concepts of namespaces I've explained namespaces in my future videos also so you can have a check on it and I'll be going to have create some future videos in namespace also so we'll not talk about right now so first and foremost we need to understand that the header file we need to include is fstream so once we include the fstream what is the second task the fstream is having three major class okay that is of stream if stream and f stream okay these are the three major classes uh, having in the f stream header file with the help of which we can do the C++ file io operations so what is the importance of three different classes? OFStream is a specific class which will be used for writing the data into the files. IFStream is a special class which will be used for reading the data from the files. And FStream is a special class which will be used for reading and writing both from the file. So if you want to do simultaneously read and write, then you need to write, use the create the object of FStream. If you want to simply write, then you have to use the concept of OFStream. If you simply want to read, you have to use the concept of IFStream. So these are the three major classes. So we know the classes, okay? Who has created the classes? It is inbuilt cl library classes. So we don't have to create these classes. We simply need to create the objects of these classes. Okay, so in today's session, we have understood what is the header file, which uh, objects we have to create. And now let's see a simple example in which I'll be trying to write an integer and string value into the file. And I'll be showing how we can read the integer and string value from the file with the help of example. So first and foremost, in this session, I'll be only explaining of fstream and if, ifstream and ofstream only. fstream related, that is the third class, which we have I've told you, will not be explained in this session. It will be explained in my future videos. Okay, so let's into get into this example. So first and foremost, I've included the fstream header file. That is part one. I want to write the data. So first and foremost, if you want to write it, as I've explained previously, we have to create an object of ofstream. So I've created an object of ofstream. In the ofstream, I've specified 1.txt. Now you have to very much careful about this thing that 
OS stream if you don't specify any modes I've not explained the modes right now it will be explained in the second part only but right now you should understand whenever you create an object of OS stream you can specify the file names at the at the same time only that means we are using the concept of constructor so whenever you create an object of OS stream OS stream will create a new file that means if existing file is there already it will delete all the contents and it will create a new file from 1.txt if there is no such file exist then it will create a new file for 1.txt because as such I have not ex explained the modes so according to right now the statement will create a new 1.txt file for me okay so we have created the variables as per our requirements I've created I've just asked the value for the integer and string value so uh, see out and see in and the value will be stored in val1 and val2 now you should understand the val1 and val2 is having the values but it is stored in the temporary memory or you can say in the RAM I want to take into secondary storage or you can say I want to take the data into the files how I can do f out is an object of OF stream I'm saying f out please transfer the data to of val1 to the files and f out please transfer the data of val2 into the files by doing this much it will take val1 and val2 values into the file that is 1.txt my task is over now I want to process with the files for reading purpose or you can say as and when you complete the task you have to release the object and the file you should understand whenever you create an object and link a file with it that file and the object and the file will be linked with each other so once the task is over you should release both of them so I'm writing f out dot close by writing this thing f out is free from 1.txt and 1.txt is also free it can that file can be used for further purpose that means someone else can use that file for reading or writing f out is free because it can be that same object can be used for writing into same file or maybe in some another file also okay so once that is done I want to read it so instead of OF stream now I will create an object of IF stream I'm specifying the file name because I have released the file I can create the object of it for reading purpose I'm saying same way like seen I'm saying FIN please read the value and store into REL1 you should remember that value is stored in VAL1 and VAL2 now I'm taking the values from the file and storing into REL1 and REL2 for the checking purpose whether the same value has been read or not I'm simply printing the values so let's try to run this program and see what are the outputs we are getting so I first compile the program so compilation done I run it I say value as 100 and name as Vinod so you can see that it is simply it has read it successfully that value integer value have written 100 and the string value was Vinod okay so I can say this program has successfully been run I hope I have cleared the doubts of the very basics of file IO in C++. In future sessions we will be seeing what is the importance of open method, how we can write different ways, how we can write with characters and all those things. Okay, And we will be even seeing some of the modes and what are the different modes and what are the importance of it. If you have any queries you can write comments to this video or else you can uh, post email to me. Okay, The best option is you can write comments because I will be checking that regularly. You will find all codes related to this video in my blog that is winothebest.wordpress.com If you like this video please don't forget to subscribe my videos. Thank you and have a nice day.